<laughs> what if I told you that I am a fatherless daddy's girl? You would probably say, how sway? And I'll tell you, although I barely knew him, his decisions or the lack thereof impact my life in a major way. He is also the person that taught me that forgiveness is so important. When I was eight years old, my mom allowed me and my brother to go visit him in Ohio for the first time. I was so excited because it was the first time I got to get to know the man that I yearned for for so long. And it was. I got to see him mix and master his tracks in the basement. He was a DJ, hence my love for music and dance. It was good until it wasn't. One day, my father told me to put my niece inside the tub. He said, go put her in the tub, you and Alicia. And I said, okay, but I didn't do it. And when he found out I didn't do it, he tried to chastise me in the kitchen. He said, so you not scared that you're in trouble? And I was like, no. He grabbed me by my neck and slammed me against the wall. And then he told me to go upstairs so he can finish whooping me. And he did, he beat me, he beat me. I don't remember crying, but I do remember saying, I wish you would die. That was the last time I got a chance to spend time with him. A couple years later, I had a dream that he did pass away. I went to my mom, like, mom, I gotta call my dad because I had this dream. And she said, Marcia, I don't know where he is and I don't have his phone number. You need to go ask your grandmother. And so I did. I called my grandmother, she told me the same thing. Marcia, I don't know where he is, and I don't have his number. Ironically, <laughs> five minutes later, he called. But before I can form a conversation with him, my mom snatched the phone. They argued about child support. They said, you know, click him. He's off the phone. Not even a week later, I got another phone call. This time it was my grandmother. Marcia, Marcia, he's gone. And I'm like, what is she talking about? My mom later told me that the dream that I had came true. He was gone, death by suicide. I share this with you guys because for years I struggled, internally and externally. Externally because that was the first man to ever put his hands on me. And I made sure that nobody would make me feel defenseless like he did. So if you knuck, <laughs> I was going to buck. <laughs> I was going to buck for years. For years I struggled internally with what I said to the people that I love because I felt like if I said something, maybe you might run away from me and I might not see you again because I felt like if I just spoke to him, just if I just got to say something, maybe the outcome would have been different. For years, I struggled with feeling like I wasn't enough because what I didn't mention is my mom didn't allow us to go to the funeral, but she did allow me and my brother to spend a lot of time with my dad's family. And during that time, they would always brag about how he loved my cousin and how he was there for her birth. And if he was here right now, oh, he wouldn't play about her. But what about me? I was here while you were here and you played about me. What about me? It wasn't until I got tired. I got tired of fighting. I got tired of people pleasing, shutting up so that you can just choose me. Just choose me. I got tired of feeling less than. So I started doing some self-healing, you know, going to therapy, reading, writing. And I came across a book called Forgiving What You Can't Forget. And in that book, it told me not to only forgive the situation, but also forgive the emotion. I was used to forgiving the situation. Oh, you hurt me, it's cool, it's cool. Oh, you stabbed me in the back, it's, it's fine, it's fine. But I was never taught to forgive the emotion. And so when I started applying that principle, I had to go back and start forgiving the emotion. I had to go back to my dead father and say, I forgive you for putting your hands on me and making me feel defenseless. I forgive you for not sticking around. And I forgive you for not making me feel like I was enough. I forgive you. It was in forgiveness that God showed me that I don't have to fight, <laughs> that he's already fighting for me. It was in forgiveness that God showed me that I didn't have to muzzle my mouth. 
I can say what I want to say, how I want to say it, and whoever's going to be there is going to be there, and whoever leaves, leaves. He showed me that I can't control anybody's exit strategy. He showed me that I am more than enough. But in order to learn that, y'all, I had to go back. I had to go back to my past and forgive so that I can move forward. My name is Marcia. Who do you need to go back and forgive so that you can move forward? Yeah.